actually wasn't too long ago uh, when we thought that humans were the only people that, the only species that use tools, that that's what made us unique. And then Jane Goodall showed that primates use tools, and then we found out that crows use tools, and sea otters use tools, and elephants use tools. And so, uh, oh, one, well, I got to tell you one the digression about elephants is that I, I was reading up on it recently, and elephants allegedly chew sort of a bolus of fibrous material that they spit out onto watering holes to cover them up so other animals can't use the watering hole. <laughs> As my son said, they're sort of like licking your food so other people won't eat it. <laughs> um, but just looking at the diversity of our tools, so if we're not the only uh, species that makes tools, the thing that I think makes us amazing is that we make uh, profuse and awesome tools. So you look at, you know, we have say, looked at shop tools, crafting tools, and now we're about to look at cooking tools. Um, Elizabeth Faulkner is here today. I'm, I'm a little starstruck because I'm a big food uh, TV watcher and she's been on Iron Chef and the next Iron Chef and uh, Top Chef um, and she's a food competitor, which I guess, a culinary competitor. Food competitor is like eating hot dogs, right? <laughs> yeah. She's a culinary competitor. So anyway, Elizabeth Faulkner. Gosh, you guys are hard acts to follow. Are you kidding me? Um, I don't have a... I'm a chef. I don't, I don't do any of the... I know this stuff is probably easier to build these days online, but I don't make... Um, photo, I don't do presentations like that. I usually cook in front of people. So... Um, uh, but I did... I have a... Um, I have a picture that I did send them, and they might be able to download it up here that I'll show you in a minute, because I did make Muhammad Ali's um, birthday cake recently. So... I mean, I, like I said, I'm a very competitive person. Try to, just try to beat that. <laughs> um, and I do have a picture of it, if hopefully we can get it up here. Uh, although I was at a, uh, I was judging a pizza expo. Uh, I was at Pizza Expo in Las Vegas, which, you, as you can imagine, is totally insane. It's like all these pizza makers across the country. And somebody, one of the fellow judges, had made a, pope, uh, had made a cake, had made a pizza, sorry, for the Pope. And I was like, okay, that's hard to beat. <laughs> um, but I wanted to talk to you about uh, just tools that we use in the kitchen. I mean, I have had two restaurants here and a bakery called Citizen Cake and um, Orson. And I closed them both recently uh, just because I'm moving to Brooklyn and opening a, an Italian restaurant there. And, um, but in my, particularly my last restaurant and, and over the course of the years, I've used lots of different tools. You know, chefs, we like all kinds of knives. We collect a lot of knives. Um, and I've, I do sous vide cooking, so I have high-tech ovens. I like the immersion circulator. I like, um, you know, all the tool, the, the chemistry tools that, um, that we use. Somebody was talking to me about it today. Like, I love hydrocolloids, so agar and xanthan gum and guar gum. And I'm sorry I didn't bring some of that to show you today because those are really cool tools in the kitchen, to, in the modern kitchen today. And um, what else do I like? I love cooking on a grill. I love cooking um, with a wood-burning oven. It's a kind of, that's kind of an older tool. Um, I love, uh, you know, I've got all different kinds of rolling pins. I've got a pasta maker. I've got, you know, we like gadgets in the kitchen. So, um, but I, I think some of the most important tools that we forget about, uh, are our hands and in our body. And actually as a chef, it's a very physical job. So, um, I spend, especially in competition, I spend a lot of time getting my body physically fit just so I can beat out the competitors to get to the the mixer first or get the, get the, grab that piece of equipment that might be really heavy. And, um, and I love when I, I talk about this in my cookbooks too. I have, I have a book here called demolition desserts. It's, it's got a lot of, explains a lot of tools. Um, and I talk about it in my next book too, that's called cooking off the clock. And, um, you know, just your hands are like, it's just when you're cooking at home, you don't need a lot of gadgets really. You know, you can make pasta by hand. You can make bread doughs, pizza doughs by hand. I love making cookie doughs by hand. I don't pull out my KitchenAid for, for that because I like to feel it. And there is a, a, a technique in French baking called frassage, which means, and it's, a, it's an old dough, like a sable dough. It's a very simple dough with butter, flour, sugar. And um, you, you, the technique is called frassage, which means you have to use your hand. So you're pressing the dough out on a table and, and basically using the heel of your hand to, to get a smooth texture of the butter mixed into the flour, sugar and flour. And um, I, I always kind of come back to that kind of stuff. I love using my hands. I love using 
What I brought for you today is a mortar and pestle. And this is not easy to carry around in your toolkit. Um, but it's, uh, it's ancient. And um, I'll have to carry it up here, though. <laughs> I won't smash this laptop. It's quite heavy. Um, they come in all different sizes, and they are sometimes made out of marble or um, uh, volcanic rock. Um, thanks. And um, this cute picture of, the, of you up here. <laughs> Um, and sometimes um, you can find wooden ones, you can find uh, porcelain ones, I might have said that. But this is granite, and um, in, in, uh, in Mexico, South America, it's called a molcajete, but this is a mortar. This is the mortar, and this is the pestle. And it's weighty because it smashes spices and nuts and whatever you put in there, garlic, um, really, really well. And I prefer it over a spice grinder because a spice grinder... Um, it's just a blade that actually shears whatever's in its way. And shearing is kind of, and it's also got heat because of the, the mechanical stuff in it. And I mean, anytime you have friction, you're going to have some heat. But a mortar and pestle is, doesn't really bring up a bunch of heat unless you sit there and really work it. And, um, but because of the weight of it, you can take whole spices like cinnamon sticks and cardamom and black peppercorns. Or well, I was smashing up some peppercorns and coffee out there. But um, you just get such a great, well, here's the deal. Whole spices have a lot of volatile essential oils, and um, when, when they get smashed up in a factory and you buy powdered spices in the grocery store, a lot of the, fla the, a lot of the aromatics are already gone. That, the volatile essential oils have already dissipated into the atmosphere, so use whole spices and, and grind those up or toast them and grind them, and you're going to get a lot more fragrance and you're getting a lot more flavor. So if you want to beat out your competitors, or your family or whatever, whoever you're cooking for, <laughs> um, you go for a mortar and pestle because, in, and, and I ran after stuff like this on Next Iron Chef, and when I'm doing stuff, I, I think about this because I'm thinking about every possible advantage I can have. And an advantage to this old piece of equipment or tool is to, you know, get flavor. I'm competing for flavor, obviously, and taste. So I, I highly recommend, these are cheap. You can buy them in Chinatown uh, or Clement Street, whatever. And um, it's just a goal, and, and they're beautiful just to have in the kitchen. So, And also just smashing nuts. You can make pesto in there. It's, it's a great tool. Um, my other favorite tool is a blowtorch. I didn't bring one, but then I don't know why, because we had sparks here. I was like, oh, they probably have a fire issue about that. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's the exploratorium. Uh, <laughs> there's fire everywhere here. <laughs> and I forgot how cool that is. Um, so, uh, But a blowtorch is a very handy tool for... Um, for somebody who's really into pastry like me. So I, I use it for um, obviously caramelizing sugar on top of a custard or creme brulee. Uh, that would be the sort of classic application. But we use it to warm things all the time. So if I put like cold butter in a mixer and I go, ah, it's kind of a little too cold for me to work it, well, I can, of course I can microwave it, but it's kind of a, it's a shortcut. I can put the butter in there and then just burn the bottom of the bowl slightly, just, just kind of uh, tempering it or heating it and then um, and softening the butter that way. Or if... When we're doing egg whites, we always want to use them at, egg, at room temperature and not so ice cold. So um, I'll put my egg whites in there and put the whip, whip attachment and start warming it that way. So just in buttercream, if it's starting to look like it's broken, it might be too cold. A bullet torch is kind of handy for that, but I don't think everybody here makes buttercream at home all the time. <laughs> um, and, uh, and knives, of course, are my other favorite tool. But you've got to have knives to, to cook, you know, make stuff, so... That's really all I wanted to show. I wanted to show you this picture of um, Muhammad Ali's cake. So if somebody can download that email, I know it, it went through. Um, maybe we'll show you, that, show you that at the end. But it was pretty cool. I did make a. I made a. He, he, I'll just tell you this quick story. He, um, his wife wanted. Uh, he wants a pink Rolls Royce for his birthday. Wanted a pink Rolls Royce, and she was like, "I'm not going to drive around. This is in Phoenix. I'm not going to drive around town in a pink pink Rolls Royce." So she goes, "We thought that would be a good theme." And I said, "Well, I'm a modernist. I make really kind of Frank Gehry looking cakes. I don't. Really, I'm not an Ace of Cakes kind of person. I don't use Play-Doh on cakes, and because um, I want you to eat it." And um, so she goes, "Well, you're an artist. You can do whatever you want." And um, and then, but no boxing theme because he's kind of over that. And um, <laughs> so so we did manage to build a little pink. Rolls Royce out of, and we had to cover it in fondant, which I, I just don't like it. But um, but it looked pretty cool. And then I built this uh, a bunch of different cakes and built them up like a big city. And we actually put little lights in between the the blocks of cake. And uh, I made big panels of nougatine, which is like sugar, caramelized sugar, and nuts together, and pressed out kind of flat, so almost looked like billboards everywhere. And then 
big pieces of tempered chocolate. So like, you know, you see chocolate curls, but I made giant ones. And um, so this thing did look like a big, sort of like Frank Gehry meets, meets Gotham City with this pink Rolls Royce pulling through it. And, uh, and, it, and then we put um, lots of chocolate straws and candles and sparkle candles, and it was so cool. And, oh, I did do some pulled sugar ribbons, too, that look like, um, you guys, you've probably seen some pulled sugar. You don't see it that much. A lot of people don't do it, but in, in the pastry world, it's a pretty high-tech style of making, like, homemade candy canes, but in ribbon form. And um, I did them all in, in boxer short colors, so really bright and colorful. So it was, it was very fun, and I was obviously very honored to make the cake for the greatest. So anyway, thank you very much. <laughs>